Mozilla is under fire for supposedly selling your data, but is that actually true or is this another case of people misreading legal jargon? Let's break it down, but before you rush to the comments, I want you to watch this video all the way through. There's a lot to cover and I know it's tempting to respond with a knee-jerk reaction, but trust me, you're going to want all the context before making up your mind. And for those of you who don't know me, my background is in cybersecurity, and part of cybersecurity isn't just technical protections. It's also understanding compliance and legal frameworks. In fact, compliance was a major part of my CISSP certification. So when companies update their terms of service or privacy policies, I don't just skim them. I actually analyze what they mean in a legal and security context. And before we dive in, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and check out my other socials linked below. Now, let's take a look at how we got here. So what's happening with Mozilla? Mozilla, the company behind Firefox, recently updated its terms of use, and suddenly the internet exploded with claims that Mozilla is now selling your data. But here's the thing. This is mostly misinformation and misunderstanding of legal language rather than Mozilla actually betraying user trust. If you care about user privacy, you need to understand what's really happening instead of just taking the headlines at face value. Let's break down the legal jargon. So where did this controversy come from? Mozilla updated its terms of use to be more transparent, but the problem comes from the definition of the word sell. In some legal jurisdictions, especially in places like California under the CCPA, California Consumer Privacy Act, selling data can mean just sharing or exchanging data in any way, even if no money is involved. Mozilla, like many other companies, has to include this broad definition, even though they aren't literally selling your personal data to advertisers. This is why people hate legalese. Honestly, legal documents can feel like doublespeak. They say one thing, but mean another. And it's designed to protect the company first, not necessarily to be clear to the end user. This is also why anyone in cybersecurity usually knows a good lawyer. Because when you deal with compliance, contracts, or anything that could lead to liability, you need someone who speaks legal fluently. Like when I first started doing physical penetration testing, Giggity, I had to get legal guidance to make sure I wasn't walking into a situation where I could be arrested just for doing my job. If you know, you know. Let's talk about what Mozilla is actually doing. Let's be clear. Mozilla has not changed its core stance on privacy. Firefox doesn't sell your browsing history or personal data to advertisers. They still actively block trackers and fingerprinting. Telemetry data collection is minimal and can be turned off. Now, does Firefox collect and share some data? Yes, but here's what that actually means. Mozilla themselves said in their blog post, in order to make Firefox commercially viable, there are a number of places where we collect and share some data with our partners, including our optional ads on new tab and providing sponsored suggestions in the search bar. So what's happening here? This is not the same as tracking based advertising like Google or Meta. These ads and suggestions are optional and can be disabled in settings. And whenever Mozilla shares data, they take significant steps to protect privacy. Whenever we share data with our partners, we put a lot of work into making sure that the data that we share is stripped of potentially identifying information or shared only in the aggregate or is put through our privacy preserving technologies like OHTTP. So even when some data is shared, it's anonymized, meaning your personal identity, identity is stripped from it, aggregated, meaning it's collected in large groups, not on an individual basis privacy preserved, meaning it's routed through oblivious HTTP OHTTP to prevent tracking. Mozilla is actively working to make sure Firefox remains privacy friendly while still remaining financially sustainable. They also remind users, we're continuing to make sure that Firefox provides you with sensible default settings that you can review during onboarding or adjust at any time. In other words, you control what's shared. If you don't like it, turn it off. Well, what's the alternative? And this brings up a bigger question. If you don't use Firefox, what's your alternative? Can you name a browser that isn't just a fork of Chromium or Firefox, but still gives you the same level of control? Because here's the hard truth. Almost every other major browser today is built on Chromium or Firefox. Sure, you can use Firefox forks like Florp, which is pretty interesting and something I've played with myself, and other forks like LibreWolf, but at the end of the day, 
They and other Firefox forks are, rely on the vast majority of work being done upstream by Mozilla. Same goes for Brave, which despite its privacy features, still depends on Google's Chromium engine. And here's the real concern. I don't know if many of you remember or were even around when Microsoft's embrace, extend, extinguish strategy that got them in trouble with the Department of Justice, DOJ. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Google pulls similar moves once there's a lack of competition. Once Firefox is gone, Google would no longer have to pretend to care about open web standards. They'd have free reign to make Chrome and Chromium even more locked down, even more restrictive, and even less privacy friendly. If you truly want a privacy focused browser that isn't dependent on Google's ecosystem, Mozilla is really the last option standing. What you should take away from this. Mozilla did not suddenly start selling your personal data. Firefox is still one of the most privacy friendly browsers out there. And you can disable data collection entirely if you want to. If not Firefox, then what? There's no real alternative that isn't a Chromium or Firefox fork. Instead of jumping to conclusions, we should actually read these policies carefully before hitting the outrage button. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. You can also follow me on Blue Sky, Mastodon, TikTok, and Discord. All the links are in the description. And if you want to continue the conversation, join the community on Discord or catch me live on Twitch. See you in the next video or over on stream. Happy hacking. Stay safe out there.